So at the top of the page, for the first case, x squared minus 6x plus 7 in blue, how many times does that cross the x-axis? Again, that's the solution. Summer? Two. So right here and right here. X squared minus 6x plus 9. Remember we talked about last class, when it touches once, that's really a double root. Because when you solve an equation that's degree 2, there's typically two solutions. There's two factors, two roots, but this is called the double root. So that's why there's only one. And then in green, it doesn't cross at all. Now it's zero real solutions, if you want to make note, today we're going to because when learning the quadratic formula, we can be taking the square roots of negatives, which gives us an imaginary number. So these solutions, in this case, are complex. Yep. So the next part of the table, I have four different equations, which are noted in the top row, and then their picture that goes along with it. So you can make the connection with the equation and the solution. Remember, x squared plus 6x plus 9 factors x plus 3, x plus 3, which really has the roots of negative 3, negative 3. But we don't write them twice. It has one root. It's the same root. This is the case where you have the double root. The next one, x squared minus 4. If you did factor, it'd be x times x minus 4, giving you the roots of 0 and 4. So you can see it crosses at 0 and 4. So when you can factor, it's always best to factor. With an equation like this, in the third uh, column, there's no factors of 5 that combine to 1. 5 is prime. So 5 times 1 it either com uh, combines to a 6 or a 4. So that's the case where we have to use the quadratic formula. So if you see a solution like this, it's in the form 1 plus or minus square root all over some number. So this is a qu uh, an equation where you had to use the quadratic formula. Okay? And then this one, this has no real solutions, so we call them imaginary. So for this column here, it says the number of roots. This is referring to real roots, so that would be zero because the roots are imaginary. Imaginary roots are not irrational or rational equal or unequal. That's only, so when we get to the next box for today, because we're going to have to solve for x, but also tell me what kind of roots you have. I want you to look at those numbers. Are they real? Are they imaginary? If they're rational, irrational, equal, unequal. So let's make our way left to right. So if they're imaginary, you won't be circling or making any other note. When I talk about 1 plus or minus radical 21, now the square root of 21 is positive. So no imaginary. That makes them real. But when you have a square root of 21 in there, does that mean those numbers are rational or irrational? Irrational. When you can't take the square root of a number, and when your answer is left in terms of a radical, those are irrational. And then the plus or minus indicates you have two roots. So those are two unequal solutions. In this picture, we also have two, 0 and 4. Those are real, but 0 and 4 are rational or irrational? Rational, and they are unequal. The only time you have equal roots is essentially this double root case. So they're equal, negative 3 is a rational number, and it's real. So we have 1, but it's a double root. So take a look at the first question, but before we do that, we have to review the quadratic formula. So in the box, I want to see if you can write it down from the video. You can sing the song quietly to yourself, whether it be the One Direction song or to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. But we're going to today solve by using the quadratic formula. So you first need to identify A, B, and C. I want you to make a note that it needs to be in standard form. Okay? Standard form means equal to zero. So in number one, we would have to add the 2 over before you can identify the A, the B, and the C. So the quadratic formula, x equals, as I mentioned, you're lucky I'm not musically talented, so I won't sing it, 
plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so the first thing we do, once it's in standard form, identify your a. So here a is 3, here b is negative 5, and c is 2. Once you have your calculator ready, because you're going to type in this whole expression in the calculator to see what one number that's equivalent to. So quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac plus or minus is right before the radical. Nope, the only thing you're going to type in the calculator is to see what the number is under the radical, which is that expression. So negative 5 squared, not the whole thing. I just want you to use the calculator to simplify the number underneath the radical. Okay, so negative b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Because we can, whoops, instead of writing the a, I want to substitute the 3. We can do calculations like negative of negative 5 in our head and 2 times 3 in our head. I want you to tell me it's going to be 5 plus or minus the square root of what number? 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2. 1. All over 2 times 3, 6. Now, when you can take the square root or simplify it, you want to. 1's a perfect square. So your two solutions are really, one of them is going to be 5 plus 1 over 6 and the other one is 5 minus 1 over 6. So what are those two numbers? We end up with 6 over 6 and 4 over 6. So x equals 1. And you should always put it in simplest form, whether it be a radical, fraction, complex number. So 4, 6 reduces to 2 thirds. Now, that's the answer. State the nature just means are they real, imaginary, rational, irrational? I want you to describe them. So one and two thirds are definitely real. Are they rational or irrational? Rational. Two thirds is a repeating decimal, which is rational. And they are unequal. All right, number two. So yes, memorizing the formula could be easy. You have the songs to help you do that. But when you get an equation like this, yes, you have to apply the formula, but you have to get it to the point where you have a, a trinomial or quadratic equation, which is equal to 0. So when you have a fractional equation, you want everything in terms of a fraction, but most importantly, in terms of a fraction with a common denominator. So when I have 2 over x minus 1, what do we have to multiply that first fraction by if the two expressions in the bottom are x minus 1 and x plus 2? x plus 2. Very good. So I'm going to write it all out first. So then plus, what do we multiply 3 over x plus 2 by? x minus 1. And then we have equals 1, and that I have to multiply by both. So x minus 1 times x plus 2. Because we need both the factors. So they each have both. Okay? The whole goal is to get that common denominator. Once you have the denominators the same, you can cross them out and then we solve the top. So this is really 2x plus 4 plus 3x minus 3, 3 times negative 1, equals, I have to do the full FOIL, and we get x squared plus x minus 2. Now, as I mentioned going over the homework, we want the x squared to be positive, so move everything from the left to the right side. So put 0 on the left. So this ends up being 5x plus 1 equals x squared plus x minus 2. Subtract the 5x, subtract 1, so 
we get 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 3. Identify your a, b, and c, and let's plug it into the formula. Because there are no factors of 3 that combine to 4 when your signs are different. So a is 1, b is negative 4, c is negative 3. So quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So as I mentioned, we can easily do the, the front part, the bottom part, what's the radical underneath. So on your calculator, type that whole expression in, and what number do we get? No, you don't have to show your work for me for that point. You can type that on the calculator. Negative 4 squared is 16. 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. Negative times negative is positive. So you should get 16 plus 12, which is 28. 28 has a perfect square factor, which is 4 times 7. So this is really 4 plus or minus 2 radical 7 over 2. Can you divide the 4 by 2 and 2 by 2? Yeah, so we reduce this. Divide 4 over 2 is 2 plus or minus 1 radical 7 or just radical 7. And when the question doesn't tell you to round, this is the exact answer. Describing these roots, these roots are real, but this time because we have the square root of 7, they're going to be rational or irrational. So they are real irrational and unequal. Next one is a proportion. So with a proportion you can cross multiply. Go ahead cross multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. And x plus 1 times x minus 2 is x right. squared minus x minus 2. If you want to write it side by side, so x plus 1 x minus 2. Your little smile, big smile, gives you the middle term. That was our check in factoring. So 1x minus 2x is negative 1x. But we want it set equal to 0, so move the 3 over by subtracting. So proportion was easier to write the equation for. Are there factors? So realistically, you should be looking at each equation. Can you factor this? Are there factors of 5 that combine to 1? No. That's why we use the quadratic formula is when we can't factor or when the factoring is too hard. So A is 1, B is negative 1, C is negative 5. So plugging it in, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4 A C all over 2A. So we have a 1 and a 2 plus or minus what radical? 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 5, that's 20. You should get 21. Can you break down 21? What's the perfect square factor that goes into 21? You can't. So this is the answer. And these roots are real. Because of the radical 21, they're going to be irrational and unequal. Last one, before we quickly do the square root method, we're going to get a complex number. So if we're going to get a complex number, what type of number are we going to have under the radical? In order to get i, that must be the square root of what type of number? Negative. Negative. You want to start by... Doubling x plus 3, remove the parentheses, you get 2x plus 6 equals negative 5 over x. And then who can tell me what the next step would be to solve for x here? It almost looks like a proportion. You can put it over 1 and cross multiply. So put this over 1, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, and x times 2x plus 6 is 2x squared plus 6x. Move the 5 over to give you 0 on the left, 2x squared plus 6x plus 5. 
Now, do you guys want to try to see if we can't factor that, or do you want to go right to the quadratic formula? All right, so these are expressions that you guys struggle with because the A is not 1, so it's greater than 1. You can try to factor, and you possibly can. When you look at your answers, you'll see whether you can or cannot factor. But since it's too challenging for some, we'll go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So A is 2, B is 6, C is 5. So X equals negative B plus or minus the square root, B squared minus 4, a, C, all over 2A. So we have negative 6 and 4. What's our radical? Knowing or having the end in mind, because it's going to be A plus BI, we should be getting a negative underneath. So when you type it in your calculator, if you don't get a negative number, we've done something wrong. What is that negative number? Summer? Negative 4. What is the square root of negative 4? 2i. So this is x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2i over 4. Now you can't divide 6 by 4 or 2 by 4. So when you can't divide those coefficients in the numerator by the number in the denominator, you take out a GCF of each. 6, 2, and 4 are all even, so they're all divisible by 2. So divide this by 2 and you get negative 3. Plus or minus, divide that by 2, you get 1, or just i. Divide that by 2, you get 2. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus i over 2. Is i irrational? It's imaginary. Only real numbers are rational and irrational. So that starts the tree. So it's not, so if you were to state the nature of the roots, this is good because the only thing you have to write is that they are Imaginary. Last page. This is going to be quick. It's the quickest method to solve and probably your favorite because the square root method just means that you take the square root of both sides. So to solve for x, we undo the square with the square root and x is equal to 3. Not only a positive 3 but negative 3 both the plus and the minus. State the nature of the roots. Well, these are real. They are rational and unequal. Before you can take the square root in the next one, you have to subtract 25. And we get x squared equals negative 25. So you need the x squared on one side, the number on the other. When you take the square root here to undo the square, this is the square root of a negative number. So if it was the square root of positive 25, it would be plus or minus 5. But since it's a negative 25, you have to add that i at the end to indicate you took the square root of a negative. And then the last one, again, you want the x squared on one side and the number on the other. So before you can take the square root, you have to move the 4 over, which would turn the 20 into a 24. So 4 plus 20, x squared equals 24. Take the square root to undo the square. And x equals, so go ahead, and unlike I did in the first one and writing them out separately, the positive root, negative root, put your plus and minus in there. And what's the largest perfect square factor of 24? So it's 4 is the largest, but 4 times 6. So x equals plus or minus 2 radical 6. So if you were to do the quadratic formula, which also has x equals negative b plus or minus square root, you would get the same answer, okay, no matter which method you use. Oh, so up here, the nature of the roots, I forgot, are imaginary. Your roots here are real because there's no i. Are they rational or irrational? Irrational because of the radical 6 and unequal. Thank you, Hunter.